one in the morning you just came from having fun hanging out clubbing with your friends only for you to have to face yourself scary story time hey y'all sorry it's been so so long my life has literally been flipped upside down but i love and appreciate you guys for the patience so there's this girl let's call her marissa she got off of work around like 5 p.m and her best friend hits her up like hey girl let's go outside it's friday let's go out she's like bet we're outside so they go out they have fun they have a great time as they're leaving she meets this guy and he's charming Okay, so part of this story was CP, so I'm going to say it. He kissed her on the cheek, and she starts to blush and feels so happy going home. She gets in the car with her friend, and her friend drops her off at home. She's drunk. She goes inside, and she noticed that on her cheek, where he kissed her, it feels itchy. She gets in the shower to wash it off and puts her pajamas on. And when she gets out, she noticed that there's a rash on her cheek. Now she starts to feel sober from this because in her area, there's a lot of voodoo she now she's worried like if she got got she tries not to overthink and she puts some cream on it and goes to bed oh she ain't going to sleep no time soon so she's in bed and as she's about to fall asleep she hears her name being called and so that wakes her up and she's like oh am i crazy did i just hear my name being called she's like oh i'm probably just drunk and she tries to go back to sleep again only this time her name is being called but it was her full name the first time was just her first name this time it's her full government and at this point she shook she sat up and she waited to see if she was gonna hear it again and she heard it again only this time it screamed and she realized that it was coming from out of her window and so she walks to her window only to see herself standing outside calling her name wait 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 a minute wait a minute you said herself and her her face was itching after that dude had kissed her see this is this is what i be talking about you got to be careful around this world you got to be careful around this world mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. self i'm seeing myself standing out in the mirror and in it we need a part two we need a part two. So she's looking at the window and she sees herself and she is frozen in fear, terrified. And at this point, whatever that is, is repeating her name over and over. Marissa, Marissa, Marissa. And it's staring straight into the front of her house, like the, her front door. As she's standing there terrified, don't know what to do, her grandma busts into her room and she gets in there prepared. Like she had the sage in her hand and was praying already. And her grandma says, go to my room now. But she wants her grandma to see it, to, to, to see her outside. So she's like, grandma, come look outside. It's me. It's me. And so grandma goes to look out the window, but she doesn't see anything. Only her that can see herself outside. So her grandma tells her once again, go to my room now and stay there. I'll be right there. So no questions asked. She runs to her grandma's room because she's terrified. And as soon as she got to the room, you know how grandmas be having those old um, dressers with the big mirrors in front of them, the, the flowery things? She gets to her room and she sees herself in the mirror and the whole side of her face, the side that the guy kissed, the skin is peeling off. She starts screaming, crying, terrified. So her grandma runs back to the room to make sure she's okay. Grandma's like, what? What happened? What happened? Why are you screaming? What happened? Did something happen? She's like, my face, my face. She's crying, saying, my face. Do you see my skin? My face. Grandma's like, what are you talking about? Your face is fine. She's looking at herself in the mirror. She's like, no, my skin is, I, I can see it. I see my skin peeling off. And grandma pauses for a second and she asks her, did anybody touch you tonight? She tells her grandma, yeah, I met this guy. He was really cute. He was handsome, but he kissed me on the cheek before he left. In the moment she said that to her grandma, her grandma looks terrified. So she immediately makes a phone call. She's not telling Marissa who she calling. She just leaves the room and makes the phone call. And then in about 30 minutes to an hour, two men arrive. One of them was her uncle and the other one was her uncle's friend, a voodoo priest. We need a part three. We can't we can't just walk away from this story like this. Do y'all see do y'all see what's happening right? Okay, come on, let's just let's go find it. So the uncle and his friend get there and obviously they ask like what happened and she's still freaking out trying to calm herself down but she managed to calm herself down enough to explain what happened 
She told them about how she met the guy at the club. He kissed her cheek. They went their separate ways. And at this point, she still sees that her skin is falling off, right? And so they ask her, who is the guy? Like, you guys exchanged numbers, right? She's like, yes, we did. And immediately went to her phone to look for the number. But for some reason, the number's no longer on her phone. And at this point, she's like, what the fuck? So she calls her best friend and she's like, hey, girl, I'm sorry it's really late, but a lot of things are happening right now and I need to ask you, who was the guy? Do you remember the name of the guy that I was talking to outside of the club before we left? And her best friend goes, um, what guy? She's like, when we were on our way to the car, I stopped because this guy. Excuse me, excuse me say what? Excuse, excuse me, say what? Come again? Come again? What guy? You don't remember? What? Come again? Say what? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. Guy started talking to me. He was really cute. He was really handsome. And her best friend, half asleep, goes, oh, yeah, I do remember you talking to somebody, but it wasn't no cute, handsome guy. It was this old man, and I figured he was asking you for directions. And Marissa's like, what, girl? No. Like, I was talking to this really cute, handsome guy, and he gave me his number. And I told you about it when I got to the car. And the best friend is like, yeah, I just thought you were just drunk talking. Because that was definitely an old man that you were talking to. And at this point, Marissa starts freaking out all over again. Now the uncle and the friend and grandma are caught up. They took Marissa, did whatever work they had to do that night. She said they did prayers over her and a whole lot of stuff. She couldn't sleep for the rest of the night because that was pretty, pretty traumatizing for her. But eventually, you know, everything was fine until her uncle's friend, the voodoo priest, came back to the house. There's more? Wait a minute, y'all. We on part four now. Y'all ready? I, I don't even got my oranges. I don't got no snacks or nothing. This is just raw, raw. So her uncle's friend, the voodoo priest, comes back to the house to speak to grandma. Now, everything had been fine for that little bit of time. So him coming back started to make her a little anxious. And so as her grandma and her uncle, her uncle's friend are talking in the living room, she goes to eavesdrop because she needs to know. Now, before I go on with the story, let me give you a little backstory. About a month before that night where she went out, she broke up with her ex-boyfriend because he cheated and he didn't take the breakup well at all like he was continuously texting her calling her popping up at her place all that crazy stuff he just couldn't get through to his head the fact that they are actually done and then out of nowhere he just stopped and she took it as a good sign as like okay damn finally like i've been trying to tell you to leave me alone now back to the story same thing going on. Okay, so she start listening to them talking and the voodoo priest tells her grandmother that her ex is doing this. And this storyteller assumes that he sent a zombie to charm her and kiss her on the cheek. And after she gets that kiss, she will never get attention from any guy ever again to destroy her destiny. So she wouldn't get married to anybody unless it was her ex. And they called her into the room and tell her all of this. And she comes to the realization and it made sense to her. Her ex had stopped stalking her up until this point. Stalking me. He didn't really stop. He just started doing it spiritually. And so the voodoo priest, grandma, and Marissa had to do a lot of things to try to reverse it or block it or whatever. And it worked, but only to a certain extent. Because for the next three years of her life, her dating life was trash. It worked good enough for men to still be attracted to her and want to talk to her and want relationships with her, but the relationship would never go through. They would randomly just ghost her or it was something else, but it just never worked. Y'all, is we watching the same, is you watching the same video as me? I can't even, I don't even, where do you even come up with something like that? That sounds like something out of a movie. Child, these Haitian stories is crazy. I'm gonna dig more onto their pages. Um, Somebody just submitted this one to me and I, this one is good. I can't believe you guys are this unhinged. Let's get into the story time. This one is T. We're gonna call this guy Andre. Andre was the one who submitted this story to me and Andre's Jamaican. So Andre was in a relationship with this girl and they had a very tumultuous relationship. That means for whatever reason, reason, the relationship was always toxic. It seemed like they were always getting together and breaking up, getting together and breaking up. Until one day, Andre was like, I really cannot take this no more. I, I really want out of this relationship. I want nothing to do with this. He said that a couple months went by and one day he just felt the urge to just get back together with the girl. So he did. He said that he would later find out that this girl was into some dark, unbeknownst to him. This girl had other plans. She was tired of the back and forth. So after they got back together, Andre said that they always had like a super close best friend relationship where they could tell each other anything. 
So one day, as a joke, she winds up saying, saying something among the lines of, you know, for a second there, I was scared. I didn't think my stuff was working. I didn't think it worked. I didn't think I was going to get you back. So then Andre asked her, like, what do you mean by that? And she said, as a joke, what if I did Obia on you and that's why you're here? As a joke, though. They both laughed about it and moved on. He also mentioned that upon them getting back together, she was really, really pushy in terms of sex. He said that he was never the type of dude to run a red light, okay? But one day, during that time of the month for his girl, she really wanted to do it. And she convinced him, and they did it. Keep in mind that this girl had already met Andre's parents. And <laughs> Andre mentioned that his mother never liked his girlfriend. But you know, Jamaican parents are hard to please. One day, the mom came up to him and said, Son, I had a dream. Like, I really don't like that girl, you know? I had a dream that your grandmother came to me and told me that she was working Obia on you. Do what you want with that information, but I, I, I don't think you should stay with her. Andre is a spiritual dude. Andre is a spiritual dude, but he's like, Obia? Uh, I don't, I don't know. So he decides to go home and he sat his girlfriend down and started by saying, I know what you've been doing. Bro, bro, you don't know. You don't know. So you just one day miraculously after a minute of y'all being apart and you just like, you know, you decided to break up with her. And then one day you just wanted to get back with her, like on, on a whim. And, and, and she's being really pushy. And then, and then you ran the red light with her. You, let me just continue because I just, I just, oh, oh, because every time my homeboys or any, like when I was in high school and one of my homeboys like had a breakup and they just couldn't get over the girl, I was thinking in the back of my head, you must have, you must have ran that red light. Yeah, you must have ran that red light because ain't no way you see, okay, <laughs> okay doing to me just to see if she would say anything he said that my mother came up to me and said that she had a dream and went on to tell her what the mother's dream was and he said well does that sound familiar and homegirl would say okay so now here's the tea she said during one of their back and forth she said that well she read somewhere that blood is a very powerful ingredient to binding and mirrors are also very powerful magic tools so she thought why don't i just combined both she said that one day she missed him so much that she wrote his name in blood in the mirror and she stood in front of it and summoned him she was also saying affirmation like you're obsessed with me you want me you love me you can't leave me alone she said she didn't think it would work because she had only did it once and it took him a while to get to her to get back together with her and she also brought up that time that they did it while she was on her he said he was utterly disgusted that she would even do something like that. He said he left. He said he did a cleanse on one of the beaches. He wore all white and then walked into the water, dunked his head to try to cleanse himself and get rid of her energy or her spirit around. Well, he successfully stayed away from her. <laughs> but, but she, on the other hand, cannot leave that man alone. He says that this girl is literally obsessed with him. Like showing up to his house obsessed with him get cut out by his family and still comes back because she wants the man that bad she told him that if he doesn't get back together with her that she will unalive herself and she attempted her family found her took her to the hospital and when she came back home from the hospital guess who was the first person she went to go see andre and andre says that it's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama it's gotten to the point where she done fought his mama his sister his cousin she done got jumped and that girl don't care. She want that man. He says that she doesn't present as a physical threat to him. But he's definitely afraid for the ladies around him. Because she has also showed up to his dates. Sat on top of his car. And refused to get off the car. Because he was with another woman. And um, yeah, now he's thinking about moving. Because he cannot get rid of her. And the craziest thing is he didn't do nothing. She was trying to get him to be obsessed with her. But some way, somehow, I never heard this before. But a uno reverse happened, and she winded up being the obsessed one. Golly, that was a good one. Thank you, Andre. I really do wish you the best. If you guys wish to submit... Do y'all... Do y'all... <laughs> you see, this is, this is the reason why I do these type of videos. Because you need to really learn what you're getting yourself into. We are not as educated on the energetic aspects of the parts that we play in our lives. In other people's lives. The things that we do. So I just I, learn, 
learn. That's a, that's the reason why I created this whole series. Learn. That was nothing but his higher self looking out for him. Nothing but his higher self. He was the higher self was like just keep playing the game. Just be, keep playing the game. See, this everything happens for a reason. You be thinking mistakes is mistakes, but you don't ever, you don't never make a mistake. You don't never make a mistake. Let me hear the rest of it. Also, welcome back to another video. We finna just look into the world a little bit more, you know, just chill and vibe and get you a snack and learn more about the spiritual world and what is going on. Some of the food and put it in the container before he leaves, takes a video of the thing just in case, and then he leaves. When he got to the car, he sent her a text saying, hey, my mom had an emergency and I have to go meet her, but I did take some food with me. I'll see you later, love you, whatever. And so he takes the food that he took to his mom he doesn't know why he just was like let me just take some of this food maybe she can like there's some kind of test that can be done or something mind you he don't know anything about voodoo later on he calls her and he tries to act as normal as he can didn't go too well because she kept asking him like what's wrong but he played it off he asked her if she can cook for him that friday he told her a very specific meal that he wants and that he wants her to cook it for him. And of course she had no problem because she cooks for him all the time and he loves her cooking. But really his plan was to catch her in the act. So he gives the food to his mom and he didn't tell his mom that he was gonna do this. But fast forward to that Friday, he goes over to her house. This time he's not playing the game. He just acts like he's watching TV but he's also keeping an eye on her. And while he's there, she asks him to go get something from her car for her. And he's like, damn, like, I want to be watching her. Like, I don't want to miss anything. And he tries to play it off like, oh, you go get it yourself. I'll watch the food. You go get it. But for some reason, she wanted him to go get it from her car for her. And he was just like, hmm, why do you need me gone now that I'm not playing the game and my focus is actually there? You want me out the room so you can do it? And it's really starting to hit him like this girl is really doing this. And so she's really fighting for him to go to her car and get that thing for him. And he's like, why can't you do it yourself? And this turns into an argument. And he says, I'm not going to the car. And you need to tell me what's going on. She's like, what are you talking about? And he goes, why are you dipping your tampon in our food? And so she is shocked. Like this caught her off guard because she thought that you know he didn't know anything about it and of course she tries to deny it but then he showed her the picture from last time and she's still trying to gaslight him into thinking like he's crazy and so he makes up a lie and he goes well the food that i took um the other day from when you did the tampon that day i gave it to my mom and my mom and my mom confirmed that indeed you're doing voodoo on me and so she finally gives in and she's like, oh, it's because I love you so much and I don't want to lose you. And I just want to make sure that we're going to be together forever. And so when she finally admits it, he's like, oh my God. Like that's when it really hit him. Like it is true. And so the heartbreak starts settling in. And so he's like, yeah, we're done. Like this, this is done. I can't, I can't do this with you. And y'all want to know what she said to him? She chuckled and goes, no, you're not. <laughs> no, we're not done he was like what's so funny and she basically goes well it's been working so far you're not gonna break up with me and he's like yes i am and he starts getting his stuff and he starts leaving and she's like okay she was so confident that he wasn't gonna leave her because her voodoo was strong so far y'all she was right she was right he did attempt to leave her but he also admitted to me he didn't actually leave her till a whole year later. And it took a lot of praying, a lot of church going. Even when he wanted to leave her so badly, he just couldn't find himself to do it. He would end up right back in bed with her. And he said that it was the hardest year of his life because he damn near became obsessed with her. But although he was obsessed with her, he hated her at the same time. But he still just couldn't detach himself from her. Now, to you, ma'am, that's watching and that's thinking, oh, if it worked for her, then it might work for me. Yeah, pick up your jaw. Don't do it. Do not do it. This ended really well for her, but I know a lot of other people that ended up six feet under because of this. The one thing I want you to take away from that story is that you never make mistakes. Okay? Never make mistakes. Everybody's TikTok page is always in that corner to where you can go find them. We're going to wrap it up right here. I love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning into this video, and I hope to see y'all on another one. Please enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm, so, and I'm so glad to share this information about spirituality and the knowledge that I'm learning as we both watching these videos. So, 
I love y'all.